Hello. It's finally lecture five of my unlicensed psychology. I'm Zach, the uh, mystic of the Jungian variety. And today's lecture will be on my understanding of the theory of intelligence and personality. Um, I want to get started by uh, showing you a really good book that describes the uh, Jungian personality types. It's called um, Personality Type and Owner's Manual by uh, Lenora Thompson. And in this book you can get a basic description of the eight personality types, each of which has two variations. The, you know, the Myers-Briggs test where you get your INTJs and your ESTPs and stuff like that, that's based on this uh, Jung's original theories. And um, anybody who dives too, like, pretty far into type theory quickly realizes the limitations of simply taking a, a test to get your results. Um, that really isn't a good way to understand type. Um, in Carl Jung's uh, world, ty type is a much deeper topic. It's uh, just, it's actually super deep. It's like deep to the level where it's a subtle, it's like a subtle operating principle in reality that most people uh, just live by. But, on, but only, only the people who like feel different and they feel like they need to know more um, ever actually want to go into further. Um, and I, I got to this point about 15 years ago, and that's when I discovered this person, personality type and owner's manual. Um, and the, the one thing I want to add for my lecture is um, sort of like an original thought. Uh, so it's kind of a, a bit of a burden to have to add an original thought to an existing system. And I guess my audience, uh, I have a good audience today, <laughs> um, and but I'm, this, this lecture is um, a kind of a seat of the pants kind of thing, but I, I think it will go pretty well. Um, I, I, yeah, I, I only have one uh, piece of paper today, so hopefully I won't be uh, just reading too much from a script. Uh, yeah, today we're going further. It's this is a, a I in a ways it's a, like a little bit of a rabbit hole lecture, and I feel bad that the people here who didn't didn't see like my previous lecture because it's it's diving really far into the rabbit hole of psychological type and intelligence. Uh, so when I was a kid, so in Jungian uh, psychology, the the types are these natural occurrences, and people. Uh, at a certain point realize they have a type and then they, they dig into it and they say, oh, this is the way this type works, this is the way that type works. Um, but it, the type has never in Jungian psychology been diagnosed in along with intelligence in one like unified field theory. And that's, that's what I think is my contribution. So, um, I'm going to start with, I, I have another PowerPoint presentation. Uh, so I'm going to just go right into like a preliminary discussion of the basic uh, fun basic psychological functions. It's like make sure it's on fits there. Okay, good. Um, yeah. So in Jungian psychology, the basic psychological functions are described as feeling, um, thinking, uh, sensation, and intuition. And uh, each of those types has an extroverted version and an introverted version. Uh, and so, and feeling and thinking, feeling is more like valuing, but it's a, it's a, it's, it has a commonality with thinking. And, and so in Jungian psychology, there's a lot of opposites. And so the whole idea of like judging and perceiving they're, they're two opposites, but amidst those opposites, there is intuition and sensation, which are actually strongly opposed to each other, just as feeling and thinking and feeling are strongly opposed to, to each other. The typical terminology is you got your N for intuition, S for sensation, T for thinking, and F for feeling. And then this little E here represents the extroverted version of that uh, function. And the I represents the introverted function. And this is also called 
Um, and so there's a th uh, the theory of socionics is a take on Jungian psychology, which uses this idea of information metabolism. So the, it's as if all this information exists in the world, and these functions are the core entities which process different types of information in the world. I'm going straight to my next next slide. Um, okay. Out here, okay. Okay, so let's take any given person's uh, intelligence. Let's take intelligence as a broad description of that exists. This chart here, um, I have, I've just described it as, like here we have circles, like, and so he, a big circle in, for this purpose of this lecture indicates a high intelligence. And then you got your middle sized circle and, and it's tiny circles down here. And just, just to fl more further flesh out this thought, um, I call this a zone of dominance. A person who has a high intelligence in a given area will have a dominant attitude and be comfortable and, and feel like they can comfortably work with that thing very easily and it'll come naturally to them. Um, it, this is also associated with angels, like angelic principles usually are associated with an intelligence which is so capable that it can flow freely in an area without running into very many hiccups. Um, in uh, in um, animal psychology, you've got your alpha wolves, your omega wolves, you know, like your beta wolves. Well, in terms of human intelligence, intelligence also seems to work in this way, in which somebody with a high intelligence will, will have an alpha, will behave in an alpha way. Which, and, and of course, like here, and, and this is a, also strong. So I just, I'm just trying to flesh out the basic idea. In the middle zone, you've got your ordinary. In the zone of weakness, you'll have like you'll tend to have demonic behaviors, in which a person who's habitually accustomed to being slow or falling far behind will be forced to try to adapt in whatever way possible. And th those are um, submissive and like omega-style behaviors, which feels any 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 um, weakness feels really bad because in the animal world of s Darwinistic survival. Um, Weakness is just a huge liability, and, and so a any zone of weakness or low intelligence will just cause a lot of trouble for people. Um, and we all know that, and, but we don't like to talk about it very much because it's such a powerful truth. Uh, moving on to my next slide. Um, this, this slide, <laughs> let me s make sure, okay, close enough. Okay, this slide is, uh, this is basically a list of all these um, functions. Um, they all have names, and there's, a, as I mentioned, there's a thing called socionics, which is a, a particular elaboration on Jungian uh, type theory, which is different from Myers-Briggs, but it's sort of as good as Myers-Briggs, if not better, um, and it's, it's sort of just like a different way of looking at it. But they go ahead and they name <clears throat> the different functions according to the role they play in an ego structure. So when in Jungian psychology, when your ego is developing, your personality adheres specifically to one function. And then it will choose, uh, all, all the other functions will sort of lock into place, do, playing certain purposes and certain roles. And um, they do it. They only do it in a set number of limited ways. They don't. They don't. The roles don't occur randomly. But at any rate, the um, socionics names um, the uh, different ways in which a function can fulfill uh, its role. As I mean, it has eight different names because everybody's going to have each of these eight different functions. It's just their personality type will make one function sort of the lead function. And then all the other seven will fit into these other sort of categories. Um, my lecture is actually, this is just the briefest possible going over of the way the ego uh, utilizes the psychological functions. But m my lecture is actually not about, about that. that. That is the main subject of that book I showed you on personality types. 
That, that's what most personality type books are about. It's about how the ego utilizes the different psychological functions. Um, so I'm just going to go right into my way of looking at it. Um, so here I have a chart that is called perceptive modes and here's a sample individual. And what I'm writing here is a pre, pre-ego uh, condition that a human being can have. My statement is that each of the functions has a latent like inborn IQ in each person, which is basically how smart they are in that in that ability, and it doesn't it doesn't change, and it's it's like one of those things that's kind of rough because nobody really likes to be told you're this smart and you're not going to get any smarter. Like no nobody enjoys um, being told that, but you know at the same time if if we if we rule out all the things nobody enjoys being told, then we're you know you can't pursue truth very effectively in that sense. Um, so what I've done here is I've taken all the functions and I've eliminated the way in which they affect, the ego affects them. And I'm not saying, what is this person's personality type? I'm just saying, this is the natural perceptive, total perception that they are born with. And like as a baby, as a child, they'll just grow up with this. Um, I'm, here, I'll go to the next slide. slide. Here, here I've decided, like, okay, I'll illustrate a smart person. Okay, just a universally smart person. And what, what has happened here is um, that I made all eight of their bubbles really big, which is to say they're, they're effectively perceiving all these different types of intelligence really large. Um, I'm going to go to what I would say is like a rather dumb person, and I'm just illustrating this by simply making most of their circles really small. Um, and now I'm going to go to like the main topic of the, the lecture, which is, um, well, here's another here's another chart. You've got somebody with a few great strengths. Uh, yeah, just a few great strengths, which means, yeah, it's pretty straightforward. A few of their bubbles are very big. Um, and so, and here's here's the most interesting thing for me. This is that this is a here's a person who has like a few really small like a, really small bubbles and really huge bubbles, <laughs> and I I call this a mystical creative sensitive artist type because um, when they're when they're applying let's see, do I have any more yeah okay I want to put my face in the uh, in the camera again because faces on cameras are more interesting than charts on cameras. <laughs> yeah, so um, <laughs> it's not like I couldn't keep going on with my lecture, but I don't know. The face is important. Anyway, so this this strong and weak stuff is for me like the the key insight because when I you know like I've been labeled bipolar, I've been you know I've had like the people say I'm ment mentally ill and things like that, um, but that doesn't like it never helped me, but. The, the, the study of personality types has helped me. Um, and then when I started like taking the ordinary Jungian uh, way of looking at personality type, and I, I'll show you this book again. It's, it's really like the beginning of this lecture. If you read this book, you can get somewhere with my lecture. Um, uh, um, and Basically, if you have somebody who's really strong, who's got really strong intelligence in one area, and they, they won't know this, nobody will have told them this, but they'll be they'll be really quite alpha in the area in which their intelligence is strong, and so they'll be perceiving a whole bunch of things, and that the normal effect that has on like the biochemistry is is inflation. It makes a person feel very powerful. Um, but, and, but the thing is, if, if at the same time a person has like a really limited or below, far below average uh, mode of intelligence also, then at, whenever the world demands that they use that intelligence, they're going to feel like a submissive person. And so you get the, the net effect is that in the same person you can have an alpha and an omega. You know, you can have like somebody who's super dominant in some areas and super weak in other areas. And so, um, to me, that is, for, from my perspective, that's a much uh, 
e easier explanation of a lot of uh, you know artistic types, um, and you know, and I also want to add that I, I this theory has for me it's worked really well to use to to, to just you, basically you can take the theory of multiple intelligences and then you can go into the world and you can say oh well some people are smart and some people are dumb. But to, what I think I'm doing, and what I don't think anyone else is, has done yet, is to take the Jungian functions and, and up, attribute to them a given intelligence. So instead of just making them, this is your psychological type, which is what they, and then they describe to you your type, you can get a lot more detail. You know, my, like, this chart is actually my own, my own personal chart, which is the one I know the best. Like, the one I showed you with the mystical creative, uh, uh, per person, I, I drew my own functions as as how they actually are for me. Like my introverted thinking is really bad. My in extrovert sensation is quite bad. My my feeling, my extrovert feeling is pretty average. And my other five are, are my uh, introverted feelings above average, and my other four are qu far above average. And how do you know that something like this? I don't know. It's like if you believe in the system and you pay attention to it for long enough, then it's possible to sort of derive your your own truth from it. Um, I I don't know. Like it's the kind of thing where if if you had to wait for a scientific study to prove what I'm saying, th most of the usefulness would be gone because it'll take like years until somebody comes up with a scientific study. I don't I don't like that. I don't I don't. I, I'd rather just say it and let people decide for themselves if it makes sense. Um, so, I guess, I mean, that's the main point of my lecture. Um, just, just, just in case people want to know, like, what are the eight, what are the eight functions? What is their, their basic role? Um, I, I can go back to the slide where I just showed you the, the, uh, yeah, the first one. Okay, so here, here's the eight. Um, so, just in case you're, you're wondering, um, the, the the thinking function. Just so you get an idea of like what it, what does it do? Um, I, I, the, the basic associations that I came up with off the off the spot were um, metal, like uh, robots and metal. Uh, anything metallic is is associated with the thinking function. Computer logic. Um, diagnosis, diagnosing any, anything, medical diagnosis, categorization, academic philosophy, where they, do, they put a lot of words, um, military kind of things is associated with the thinking function, strategy uh, of all sorts, espionage, like crime, crime like um, spy novels, that they're, they're about, the, they're like an introverted thinking kind of function. Um, people who get angry tend to have good thinking. People are good and happy when they're angry. People who use anger effectively uh, can be can be good at the thinking function. Are often good at the thinking function. Um, discipline and sort of the gray scale of colors. You know, without without actually a lot of colors. Um, now, whole societies uh, can, can prefer one function or another. Um, which is kind of funny, like the West, the, you know, the, the West prefers the thinking function to the feeling function, where if you went to like India or Japan or China or something, you find a civilization that tends to prefer the feeling function over the thinking function. Um, if, you, if you've seen the Terminator movies, um, the Terminator, I love, I really like the Terminator movies, and metaphorically you, you could argue that um, all those robots destroying people's feelings is, is, an, is arguably the, and a metaphor of the thinking function uh, in our culture overpowering the, the the feeling function because our you know our, our culture's preference is for thinking. Um, so I'll, I'll just go through the, the feeling feeling function is um, well you can find out these descriptions in other places. I mean, do you guys want me to like keep going? No, actually, the, it was it was pretty it was pretty good. You kind of close before even presenting that you can cut it. Yeah. No, 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 no. This is how I do the lectures. Right. I don't cut these lectures. Yeah. It's all on right. yeah, yeah, I don't cut the lectures. Okay. Let's move into the, uh, wait, hold on.